what are the long-term outcomes of kidney disease? Um, are those things generally quite effective? Obviously, early static nodes to be able to be more of a metatastic type cancer, but I'm not, I, don't, I don't actually know a lot about renal cell carcinoma in it. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Kidney Coach YouTube channel. I am joined again by the amazing and wonderful Emily Carhill. Emily, thank you for joining us. Maybe let's start with that of just the, the pathi, pathophysiology of the disease and what kidney cancer actually looks like versus chronic kidney disease. Sure. Uh, so kidney cancer has actually been on the rise, sort of similar to kidney disease. Um, sort of since the 1970s, the incidence of kidney cancer has been increasing, uh, which may partly be because we are better at picking it up, but also because a lot of the risk factors are, um, you know, sort of, I guess, lifestyle type things as well. So, um, you know, I guess going back to what cancer is. So cancers, when cells in the body uh, have become abnormal for some reason and they start to grow and multiply uh, too quickly and sort of out of control. So our body doesn't have the same checks and balances that it usually would have to keep um, control of these cells. And they also don't act on their own. So cancer cells also enlist, you know, our other body cells, genes and proteins and things like that in the body um, to help them to continue to grow and divide. So it's, I guess, a little bit similar to kidney disease. Symptoms um, or signs of symptoms of kidney cancer don't often uh, come up until the cancer is sort of a little bit larger and a bit sort of further along um, because some of them are quite vague. And they're also actually quite similar, <coughs> excuse me, to um, signs and symptoms of kidney disease. So things like having blood in your urine, um, having pain on your back sort of on one side, Sometimes people can get a sort of a bit of a mass or a, a lump on one side of their back, loss of weight, um, loss of appetite, fever. That one's obviously different from kidney disease um, and anemia. So I'll often see that people are diagnosed with kidney cancer often actually when they're getting um, investigations into something completely different. So they've got something else going on and they've had a scan and it's been picked up then. Mm -hmm. rather than, you know, having signs and symptoms and going in and sort of getting those investigated. Yeah, that's so very true, isn't it? With, and with cancers in general, often, not often, but they can be one of those things that get picked up as a anomaly for other things. And I definitely know that's the case with kidney cancer because I guess a lot of people aren't thinking kidney cancer with those sort of and they're quite vague symptoms, really. A little bit of lower back pain. Unless you've got the blood in the urine, the rest could just be, oh, I've got a bit of a fever. I'm a bit fluey. I'm just a bit achy. I guess no one's going to be thinking of kidney cancer. Sounds like Western medicine, as we know, chemotherapy isn't very useful in any of the um, different um, kidney cancers, but renal cell carcinoma being the most common. So they're obviously using immunotherapy, target cell therapy. Um, what are the long-term outcomes of kidney disease um, are those things generally quite effective obviously early stages if they can remove and do um, you know obviously it's one kidney so people live we know quite well with one kidney so you know does that all help with survival rates and those sort of things or is it and is it a cancer that is going to be likely to metastasize being that it's in the renal tubule does that end up in the bladder and bladder cancer, I mean, it's filtering, so I wouldn't think it's too close to your lymphatic nodes to be able to be more of a metatastic type cancer, but I'm not, I, don't, I don't actually know a lot about renal cell carcinoma and its ability to spread and metastasize. Yeah, yeah, so it can um, spread uh, and metastasize. So I guess more commonly to the lungs, um, that would you know, probably be the primary place, but also can spread to the lymph nodes, bones, um, liver would probably be the other sort of more common places. Uh, in terms of treatment, the, having surgery, you know, generally is the best option if, if that's an option for you because obviously we're removing the cancer and then it's more about sort of mopping up anything that might be left over. Um, so, you know, survival rates are generally better if we're able to do that. But the things like the targeted therapy and the immunotherapies are, are quite well 
I guess with some cancers, you know, we're not quite there yet with some targeted therapies and immunotherapy, but for kidney cancer, they can be, you know, quite effective um, and have people, you know, go into remission for a long time. Um, like any cancer, there's always the potential for it to come back. Um, so, you know, that's where... I sort of come in with, you know, changing things like diet and lifestyle and all of those things that might have helped to uh, to allow the cancer to start in the first place. So thank you, Emily. I really appreciate uh, your expertise in this area. And um, yeah, make sure you hit subscribe. Uh, if you want more information about who we are um, at Kidney Coach, head over to www.kidneycoach.com. So until next time. Um, yeah, make sure you subscribe, hit, give us a like if you like this information. And if there's any specific topics you want to know, make sure you add it in the comments below. All right. Have a wonderful day, Emily. Thank you. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye.